Ford once again sounds a wake-up call for sports car lovers around the world with the introduction of the all-new Ford Mustang. The seventh generation is the most exhilarating and visceral yet, from its fire jet-inspired digital cockpit to the new advanced turbocharged and naturally aspirated engines to its edgier yet timeless exterior design. Along with the familiar EcoBoost and the Coyote V8-powered GT models, we also saw a new, higher-performance-oriented Dark Horse version and the ultimate track day oriented $300,000 GTD or Grand Touring Daytona version. Since the demise of the Camaro for the end of the 2024 model year, the Mustang will retain its title as the longest-running American pony car in continuous production from 1964 to present across seven generations. Despite the enormous amount of changes to the new Mustang, it is not in fact a ground-up total redesign, so several components are carryover from the previous generation. That being said, I, was, I will side with what Car and Driver magazine said regarding the new Mustang. A rear-drive, three-pedal, four-seat V8 pony car that's new and big, big of heart, attainable at home in commute or in canyon, and more than the sum of its parts. Yes, please. Forever. All day long. Sign us up. Our Mustang was produced at the Flat Rock Assembly Plant in Dearborn, Michigan on June 19th of 2023. Hey everyone, in today's in-depth walk-around review video, we are taking a look at the fully redesigned 2024 Ford Mustang GT. Now this Mustang is painted in shadow black. It is a non-metallic black color and it does feature the onyx black leather interior. Full pricing is shown on screen and a full options list is in the description box below so make sure you head over there and check that out. Today's review is going to be a full in-depth review of the brand new Mustang. We're going to go over everything from the exterior to the interior, performance, mechanical bits, and everything else in between. Buyers have a choice between the 2.3 liter EcoBoost four-cylinder engine. With that being said, our car is equipped with the more desirable of the two engines. While massaged and refined a bit, not a lot has changed. What we have here is a 5 liter Coyote dual overhead cam 32 valve TI VCT V8 engine. That is a voluminous block and head construction with twin independent variable cam timing, coil on plug ignition, with port and direct fuel injection, and a 12.0 to 1 compression ratio. This naturally aspirated V8 engine creates 480 horsepower at 7,150 RPM and 415 pound fleet of torque at 4,900 RPM. Car and Driver Magazine tested their GT from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4.2 seconds. 0 to 100 miles per hour came in 9.5 seconds, with the quarter mile hitting at 12.5 seconds at 114 mile per hour trap speed. Ford has Governor limited the top speed to 155 miles per hour. The Mustang is equipped with a 16 U.S. gallon fuel capacity and it consumes 5.6 gallons per 100 miles driven, with an estimated total driving range of 288 miles, which isn't great, admittedly, but what comes with the territory. EPA fuel economy figures are 15 miles per gallon in the city, 24 miles per gallon on the highway, and a combined average of 18 miles per gallon. While a six-speed manual transmission is available, sadly our car is not, com is not equipped with such. It does come equipped with a $1,595 optional electronically controlled 10-speed 10 10R80 select shift automatic with manual shift capability and driver selectable drive modes. As we walk around the rear of the Mustang, as you can see, the rear deck lid has been slightly redesigned from the previous outgoing model. And we'll go over in depth a little bit more of the styling changes there. 
All right, as we walk around the rear of the Mustang, even with the lights illuminated, don't worry, Ford still did keep the sequential tail lamp illumination. But what we have here is a very steeply raked roof line. You do have a double cutout in the roof. That's kind of followed all the way down that back window. And inside the rear window back here, you can kind of see the little stylistic outlines of the heritage of the Mustang from its beginning all the way to the end. You do have this really nice flared out rear fender. Flows nicely into the trunk area with this wedge spoiler. And of course the iconic tri bar tail lamps. As you can see, they're actually um, very steeply raked inwardly on a concave angle. And that trunk lid, the little lip here is actually angled outwards, but it does have a new GT logo. Your backup camera is here. Of course, you have your license plate down here. Reverse lights all the way down there in the bottom. And of course, down below, we do also have the throaty dual exhaust. Everyone comes to expect from a Mustang. And as we walk along the profile of the vehicle, it's probably where the Mustang to me looks the best is on its profile view. Just that long hood, short trunk, short wheelbase. It just looks really good. Very proportionate. Still very classical Mustang, even though it's a brand new car. Steering is electrically assisted variable rate, vehicle speed, sensitive, selectable effort, rack and pinion with normal comfort and sport modes and sports a 37.8 foot turning circle. Wheels on this Mustang are the 19 by 8.5 inch Shadow Silver Painted Aluminum shot in 255-40R19 Continental Pro Contact RX tires. Brakes are four-wheel power disc brakes with a $1,695 optional 19-inch Brembo brake package with performance linings and red painted calipers with the, the white Brembo logo. Brakes are equipped with the electronic brake booster, four-sensor, four-channel ABS, and can halt the Mustang from 70 miles per hour to zero in 153 feet. All right, and around the front, fully redesigned front end. Still looks traditional Mustang. Looks classic yet modern. All righty, up front, we have a brand new front end as we stated before. This is just looking at it in a little bit more detail. Taking a look here on the wing mirrors here. Very aerodynamic, mounted on the uh, door instead of the window A pillar. Of course, we do also have an LED turn repeater there. The mirror is also fold. Prominently displayed here is the 5.0 badge. And of course, the hood has a very sharp crease line all the way down the center that leads into the active heat extractor. It is an actual functional duct. And then here we have a look at the headlamps here. They are actually LED daytime running lights and they're projected onto the uh, bezels there. Kind of gives it a three-dimensional look and of course we have the three tail, uh, turn signal indicators up top. They also function as a daylight, daytime running lights. Headlamps are LED. Taking a look at the new grille. A little bit more upright, kind of looks like the uh, first redesign of the uh, Mustang since the uh, 2000s. A little bit more upright and a little bit more boxy. Of course, you have the Mustang prancing horse there. And you also have this interesting light thing going on here. It does have alternating daytime running light and turn into here as a flash in sequence with everything else. There are no fog lights, however. All right, now this vehicle does have remote start as standard equipment. Very simple to use, just lock the vehicle, then double press the remote start button on the key fob. All right, another cool feature this vehicle has is remote revving, engine rev. So to do that, you just hit the unlock button here and then press the lock button, double press it. Surefire way to annoy your neighbors. All right, now before we get inside, let's take a quick look at the key fob. It is just a standard Mustang key fob, nothing new here. Pretty much a standard Ford key with the uh, exception it doesn't have the Ford oval, it has a Mustang logo instead. And on the other side, we have 
our unlock, our lock, remote start, trunk release, and of course our panic alarm. Now this vehicle is also equipped with Ford's Intelligent Access Smart Key Access System. And by keeping the key fob in your purse or pocket, you're able to electronically lock and unlock the vehicle doors. To lock the vehicle, simply locate this little lock symbol here on top of the door handle. Now that will lock the vehicle. To unlock the vehicle, simply grab the handle as you would open it. And here we are presented with the brand new interior for 2024. All new materials, all new design, very nice sweeping new dashboard, new animations. Just overall, just a very nicely crafted interior. Taking a quick look at the door panels here, everything is pretty much soft touch up until about the halfway point. So you have this really nice soft vinyl here. You have this gathered vinyl here with the accent stitching. Looks like a faux carbon fiber that kind of blends into the uh, speaker grill here. That's a very nice look there. Satin silver door poles, power lock switch of course, three driver memory, power mirrors and power windows. More satin silver here, satin aluminum. You got the plastic here, door speaker down here, molded mat pocket here. Down here in the uh, door sill, you have an illuminated tread plate here with the Mustang logo. And of course we have power seats here. But let's take a quick look at the uh, driver's side instrument panel. Trunk release is here. Headlamp controls are here with your readouts and your instrument panel brightness and dim. Down in the footwell, unfortunately this car only has two pedals because it is an automatic. But you do have the aluminum sport pedals with the uh, rubber grips. This is the hood release right here. And of course you do have the Mustang logo right here. Some more of that faux carbon fiber trim. And of course a tilt and telescoping steering wheel back to the seats mentioned the uh power assist here so it's just a six-way power seat two-way adjustable lumbar support manual seat back adjust here and the seats are actually very very nice very comfortable they are very supportive exactly what you'd expect in a mustang height and tilt adjustable head restraints here you do have a magnetic release for your seat belt guide the seat belts also have the silver stripe in them Perforations in the leather allow for the heating and ventilation to go through. And as stated before, it's very nicely bolstered and very comfortable. Alrighty, pan through the interior. I'm going to show more details, and there's a lot in here because it is a brand new car. Brand new cars have a lot of stuff. Nice, thickly padded three spoke steering wheel here. It's a leather wrapped steering wheel. Got perforations here. It's a D shaped steering wheel with a flat bottom. Carbon fiber trim, satin aluminum silver uh, accents down below. The Mustang horse here. This vehicle is also equipped with paddle shifters, uh, plus and minus on the uh, right and left hand side. And we also have multifunction controls. Over here, we do have controls for adaptive cruise controls and our lane keep assist. And of course, our drive mode select buttons right here. And over here is our um, downshift paddle. This is our multifunction control for the turn indicators, high beams, and flash to pass. Over here on the right hand side, we have our Bluetooth controls. This is our steering feel here. We have normal, comfort, and sport. We've also got our Bluetooth, our audio controls here, and of course, various trip computer controls. Here is our upshift paddle, and over here is our wiper washer control. Alrighty, taking a look at the instrument cluster. Now what we have right now is the Fox body style. Of course, this is new, made all the rage and all the press materials and everything like that. However, it is adjustable and you can make it drive modes. Uh, you can make it drive mode adjustable, but to adjust it, you hit this Mustang logo here. And then over here, you'll go to your cluster theme and you'll see it says match drive mode here. Um, so we're in normal right now. So that is our new cluster theme. And then we also have Sport, which gives us this uh, BMW-esque look to it. Um, that's not my favorite. It doesn't look mustang -y enough to me. Track looks more like it's lifted out of the Ford GT. It's perfect. At a glance, you know exactly what you're looking at. Calm is nothing more than just a digital readout of the speed and your tachometer. Everything else is blank. Scrolling down, you can then select your Fox body, 87 to 93, and it does have the original typeface and does actually have a dimensional look to it. And I know that whenever you turn the headlights on, if the uh, light sensor actually kicks the lights, I believe they actually turn green. 
I could be wrong. Anyway, we've also got our trip computer by toggling the switches here. We can go through different tire pressure. We could do all of our gauge details, that kind of stuff. And then, uh, of course, you have your seek and scan there. So not a whole lot uh, in there, but it's still very informative. If you do want auxiliary gauges, then you hit the auxiliary gauge over here. And then that you get a bunch of different stuff, oil pressure, battery voltage, lateral lateral uh, G's acceleration and then you can actually get more here so you got your oil pressure coolant temperature voltage and air fuel mix and then of course your stuff there all righty moving over the top of the dash as I said there is a lot it is a uh, one of those screens it is a 12.3 inch screen here for the driver and then over here canted to the driver is a 13 inch sync uh, touchscreen display there um, it is a very nice display, very reactive. Um, everything is exactly how you would expect it from Ford. So we have all of our different uh, instrument cluster things, that kind of stuff. You hit the home button, then it goes into your home screen, which has uh, maps, um, Sirius XM satellite radio. You can also do Apple CarPlay, Google Android Auto. Placing the vehicle in reverse also activates the federally mandated activated uh, backup camera here. Active guidance lines, park assist, your parking sensor, ultrasonic readouts there. You also have access here for your heated and your ventilated seats here. And by turning them off, they're actually very nice to have. Uh, climate controls are here, so you can set your driver's side climate. Heated steering wheel control is here. We don't want that. Fan speed is here. And then of course you have your panel distribution here and it just shows where everything is at max ac dual ac all that kind of stuff passenger side controls there all right moving down air vents here in the center a little bit more of a redesign they're a little bit lower down you do have your engine start stop button here a blank switch this is your mustang drive stuff traction control for uh four-way flashers your favorites button and your max defrost audio power and volume control there we do have a wireless charging mat 12 volt power point usb type a and type c nice wide center console automatic transmission uh, selector lever you can still get a manual transmission electronic parking brake cup holders here nice wide center tunnel padded armrest here which opens up to reveal some storage and another 12 volt power point Overall, the interior is very traditional Mustang. It's exactly what you'd expect a Mustang to be. Very nicely put together. Very ergonomic. I know the controversy regarding the dual touch screens that look kind of like they're tacked on here and not really integrated well into the interior may annoy a couple people, especially the purists that really like the Mustang with the dual binnacle design. But I think in this day and age, it does work. Um, but you know, everybody has their thing i personally like it but i also completely understand where people are coming from on their reservations on it now overhead on the driver's side sun visor you do have a three channel home link universal garage door opener right here we also have overhead map lights and we also have our dome override here they're just leds and then here to turn off everything and then automatic dimming rearview mirror here and then further back still we do have some sunglasses holders here we have also got small sun visors illuminated vanity mirrors you also have a little clip there and then the sun visors do swing out and they do slide out but they still leave a lot open there so that's it that is the control center of the 2024 ford mustang all right now let's take a look at the rear seat i'm gonna go ahead and open the door up again one thing you'll see is that the door does open nice and wide And right back here, right about the center part of the seat, there is actually a release latch here. <laughs> and there is the back seat. Oh boy. Back seat looks very much carryover from the previous generation. It is uh, a dual bucket system, 50 50 split folding seat backs. As you can see, there is not a lot of room back here. And actually what looks like rips in the leather here are not rips they're actually your uh 
your anchors for your uh, child seats. But as you can see, the rear seats do have aggressive bolstering for the rear seat passengers. And of course, that silver stripe in the seat belt continues. Do you have some coat hooks here? A ton of legroom, as you can see there, just absolutely enormous. No cup holders back here, no air vents, no nothing like that. All right, there are a couple ways you can open the trunk of the Mustang. First way is by pressing this button here in the driver's side instrument panel. The other way is right here in the bumper, just right below the GT, there's a little membrane switch here. You can actually see it right about there. If you hit that, that'll actually unlatch the trunk. Or you can just double press the key fob. And it opens up that way. So what we have here is a 90 degree opening trunk. Decently, uh, a decent size lift over height. However, it does have some pretty uh, deep cutouts here. You have your owner's manual back here. You have the sound system speaker and amplifier back here. And then of course we do have our luggage area, nice and flat. It's about what you would expect from a car of this size. Not too big, not too small. And underneath here, where everything fell, in lieu of a spare tire, we do have a tire inflator kit, which gives you additional uh, storage space down here. It's concealed. And of course, for the easy fill, you do have your uh, filler funnel. And to close the trunk is very easy. You do it by yourself. All right, and there you have it. That is the full in-depth review of the all-new 2024 Ford Mustang GT. We hope you found the review informative, and if you did, please comment down below. Also, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash neighborhood car reviews and our Instagram channel at brinsoj1. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.